So now we've finished looking up uh, or going over variables and memory layout, right? So I wanna sort of bring the whole thing back together and sort of recap it in that we know that a variable has an identifier, like a human readable name, which helps us to reference it in our code because once it's compiled, these things just equate to memory addresses as we saw um, you know, stack or heap memory addresses, whether we've statically allocated it using you know, just declaring it inside of a function so that it lands on the function stack, or whether we use these dynamic allocation functions like alloc, or, you know, malloc, calloc, whatever, to dynamically allocate the memory on the heap. So the important thing is that the data type of the variable defines how much memory needs to get allocated, but um, we need to keep in mind always that these, these memory regions are allocated sequentially. And so when we're creating multiple integers, they're gonna end up sequentially in memory. But we need this uh, sort of a more complex example in how we can sort of help to cement this concept is using structures, which will be the next thing that we'll cover. But just to sort of, without going too much into depth about structures, structures are just a collection of variables that are put into some sort of a data object. And so we can see here that we have a struct my struct. So our actual data type becomes struct my struct. And this tells us the size. And so the integer, uh, the my struct contains an integer and a short. So an integer being four bytes and a short being two bytes. And so our compiler is gonna know that the size of struct my struct in bytes is six. And it's gonna know every time I create a struct my struct variable like I did here, although I didn't give it a name, that's a bad typo, um, will mean that it needs six bytes of space, right? It'll tell us the range of values, but the range of values here will come from the actual member um, data types because uh, the integer obviously can represent a four bytes, like a, has four bytes of um, resolution and the short has only two bytes of resolution. But what's also important is that the operators are defined. So I can obviously not use the plus plus incrementation operator on a structure because I can't just say, you know, my struct plus plus and expect that my int, the member my int will be incremented. This doesn't work. So if we going down, sort of go through this example a bit more as we um, caveat into structures, we'll see um, like what is this struct my struct, right? And so this is, like it's going to see structures in, in detail, they, are, um, uh, they allow the user, the programmer, to define a variable type. Um, so meaning essentially store a chunk of sequential memory that holds several items. And so uh, without allocating like an integer and then a char and then an integer and a char and having four variables floating around, we can allocate a structure which contains an integer, a char, an integer, and a char. And so they will, ha they will be allocated in memory sequentially but it becomes the, the sort of semantics of accessing these is much more structured and it's much more comparative to um, programming paradigms such as object oriented programming, right? And so a structure is defined using the struct keyword. And so the struct keyword says uh, is always required. So you, like the, the data type is not structured type name, the data type is struct structured type name. And inside, you'll, you'll define sort of like the, the name you want to call your, your variable. This is not an instance of it. Like I haven't created here a, a, an instance of the structure. I'm just defining how the structure should look in memory because a variable needs a data type and we are essentially defining the data type. And so we're saying, okay, the struct structure type name will have, you know, it'll have a number of members, but we're gonna have firstly an integer called int member, then some other ones. And at the end, we're gonna have a short called short member, right? And here we could put in names of instances that we want to create. So we can define and instantiate some structures um, at the same time, right? Um, once we have the definition of it, we can then go and create instances. And so how we would do that, like if I wanted to create a, an, a variable called my structure of data type struct structure type name, I would use a line like this. And so all this is saying is, hey, um, to the compiler saying allocate the size of this data type and I want to have a reference or an identifier to it called my structure. So when we're typing our human readable code, we know that my structure references however many bytes in memory um, this struct takes. So 
the members are going to be sequentially allocated. So int member will be, like for instance, if in the stack will have a lower memory address than short member because short member will get created after it. So we'll get a high memory address as we push you know, low memory addresses to high. And so then how we can actually access the individual ones which are in memory, like we could go and take the memory address of the structure and then say, hey, okay, an integer is um, four bytes long. So the next member will be this memory address plus four bytes. Like this is a very complex way of doing it. And it's just way too hard to really be useful. Um, we can use the um, this dot here. So I think I, uh, so the dot is an access, a uh, member access operator. And what it's saying really to the compiler is saying, I want to take my structure with the reference, uh, with the identifier my structure. And I want you to get to, to go to the memory uh, or the variable of this int member within this block of, of memory that's been allocated for my entire structure and to set those four bytes because it's an integer equal to two, right? I shouldn't have my camera in front of my screen. So um, how would this look like in memory? As we can, as you can probably imagine, um, we would see, for instance, a sum. So an integer of four bytes being allocated in memory. And then we would have six byte memory chunk being allocated for my struct, right? So we have four plus six, and this is our structure. I'm gonna move my camera because I can't see this. Put it lower. How do I do this? That's better. I can look straight up my nose. Um, exactly. I think I've already covered this. So this takes us to C operators. 